Digital transformation is about much more than just technology. And today, Manuela is gonna share a new website where you can see what's worked for others, get fillable templates and materials for running trainings, hackathons, and more. Today on PowerCat Live. Welcome to PowerCat Live. My name is Phil Thomas with the PowerCat team, and I'm here again with fellow PowerCat Manuela. Hey, Manuela. Hello. Hi. I feel like a frequent flyer. <laughs> you are. You are. You've got, your, you've got a reserved seat here. Anytime you're doing something cool, which is pretty often. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome to be here again. So today we're going to talk about adoption.microsoft.com, which I am assuming is a website you've launched to show us pictures of the pets you've adopted. Is this true? Uh, not quite, not quite. Also, that's also something that could be interesting to do. <laughs> <laughs> you think about all the additional traffic it would generate. Yes. So what is adoption.microsoft.com? Um, so it's an, um, a space that existed for change and adoption managers to get material in one place um, to go on their adoption journeys. I was quite focused on modern workplace adoption. So I had a lot of material mm. on Teams, OneDrive, Microsoft 365. Um, and a about a month ago, we introduced Power Platform as a product um, there as well to help you on your adoption journey. So what are some of the new things that you've added to adoption.microsoft.com for Power Platform? Um, yeah, so we've created two new workbooks that um, really focus on the adoption planning part. So mm -hmm. focus on the strategy and vision and nurture element as you embark on your public from adoption journey. And then another workbook really focused on helping you organize a hackathon. So very prescriptive guidance for that one particular event where we've seen with many customers that hackathons are a great way to um, generate enthusiasm and get new makers yeah. on board um, with the public platform. So we wanted to provide some more guidance um, around that as well. Um, so those two workbooks are new and the rest of the content is basically um, links to existing content that was there before, like learning paths, blog posts, articles in docs, videos, but just structured in a way to support your journey um, in a way where you can you know, learn how to engage your org, how to train your org, how to identify your champions and how to secure your environments. And having all that content centralized alone is really valuable. So tell us a little bit about the adoption portion of this. So what's in the adoption workbook? The adoption planning workbook will guide you through that planning process. So it um, provides prescriptive guidance on kind of how to assemble your team, who should you involve as part of your um, adoption journey, how do you define a strategy and, and your scenarios um, around what you want to achieve with the Power Platform. We found that many customers are really successful um, when they kind of really sat down um, and identified what success looks like for them. What are some of those key success metrics and how does the Power Platform form part of the overall um, business? and digital transformation strategy. Um, and then there's some content around um, assessing the readiness of your organization, mm. um, both, both um, technical as well as organizational readiness, um, and then really focused on you know, building a plan and onboarding employees onto the Power Platform. Um, so at a high level, it's kind of really focused on that strategy and vision element. Um, and the workbook provides prescriptive guidance so you can um, learn what good looks like and then places for you to build the plan and um, fill it out with your own goals and your, your um, own material. I like that it's so tailorable, right? Because every organization is a little bit different. So that allows them to make it specific to their needs. And, yeah. and you mentioned setting goals. So after doing this, how does an organization measure how successful they were in their adoption plan? So one of the parts of the adoption planning um, workbook is to give you ideas on what those goals um, could be. And some of the examples are listed, um, are listed here. Um, and the, the goal is for you to kind of sit down with your adoption planning team and really think about what is in scope for your adoption, what are your initial priorities, um, how, how will this technology transform your business, but equally kind of what's maybe not in scope at this, um, at this point in time, or what are some of the things that you will evaluate later. Um, so kind of at a high level, looking at some of the goals, and then a little bit more prescriptive defining um, success benchmarks. Um, and again, we're providing some examples here um, that we've seen um, other customers um, define and um, some of that could be kind of related to um, cost savings like reducing um, operating costs for um, third-party tools or other
the licenses or even kind of on-premise um, run costs. Um, some of them could be more quantitative measurements around increasing productivity, like um, faster time to market with um, some of the um, solutions that you're building or, you know, an increased number of makers um, to get rid of some of those paper and manual processes that you, you may still have. So again, kind of something that's really important to um, think about and evaluate at the at the beginning of your adoption journey so that once you're on it, you can continue to refer to this um, content um, to make sure that you're on the on the right track to to succeed. And I mean, just having example metrics can be really valuable too, right? Because there's a lot of ways you can measure success. Yeah, right. and it will be different for every um, for every organization. You know, like if you don't have on-premise systems or if that's not one of your right. overall IT goals, that might not be relevant to you. But we just wanted to provide a, um, a variety of, of measures um, that the Power Platform could achieve. Now, you also mentioned uh, a hackathon workbook, right? Who doesn't love yes. doing a good hackathon, but they, you know, they take a lot to put on. So how do you help plan? Yeah, so the Hackathon workbook is structured in a very similar way, kind of offering prescriptive guidance and a space for you to, to work in. But it's obviously very focused on that, that one event um, that you're running. Um, so the way it's structured is kind of helps you build a plan and a schedule, um, even a kind of a communication plan where we provide you with um, email templates of emails that you can send out to um, announce the Hackathon, to ask people to register for it, and to just kind of generally spread um, awareness of that. Um, and then gives you some ideas of how you could set up the event um, with a real focus on kind of running virtual events. Um, in kind of an um, international company, we, we just found that um, that works. Um, it, it works best for participants to have that virtual space. So we provide kind of guidance on what um, Teams channels to set up and, and how um, subject matter experts and facilitators could interact with Teams um, in, that, in that virtual environment. And then something that's really important to consider during a hackathon is that the end of the hackathon is not the um, end of the, mm. the success that you've achieved with it. So we provide you with um, some ideas of what you could do after the event to continue with that enthusiasm for the power platform, like sharing success stories, um, interviewing some of the participants and highlighting them in your um, intranet or in a, in a newsletter and identifying the solutions that you want to take forward post the hackathon into production and um, helping helping those makers achieve those goals. Yeah, that makes sense. Keeping it going after the hackathon is so important. And, and who doesn't love a good video interview, right, Manuela? Yes. So I assume you've got more coming, right? You're not stopping here. What's coming next? So when we launched the content, we received really great feedback. Um, so we're looking at launching a few more workbooks um, to help uh, so one of them will be focused on internal champions community. So mm. how do you identify them? How do you keep them thriving, but also kind of self-sufficient in a way? Um, so that's one of the ones that we're targeting for next year. And then there's two more workbooks that we want to launch, one for developing an internal training strategy and one for developing your governance um, mm. best practices. Um, and together with that, we also want to invest in some tooling approaches. So one thing we're planning at the moment is the hackathon best practices are great, but they still mean a lot of manual effort into sending out the communications, creating registration forms, providing a space for people to, to charge the, the solutions. So we're planning um, a solution that, that you can just install in your tenant nice. that has the registration form. It sends all of the emails, et cetera, to support that and, and just make it a little bit more approachable and easier to run an event like that. Why not build a power app for it? Why not? Why not? Why not? <laughs> That's right. what we're all here for. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for sharing all this. And I'm looking forward to seeing what's coming next. Hopefully you'll come back and we can, uh, we can chat again. Sounds good. And for anyone that wants to access this, it's adoption.microsoft.com, but you don't have to type it in. It's down below in the description. Thanks, Manuela. Thank you so much. Now, before you go, we are making new videos every week. Click this Microsoft logo to subscribe and you'll be the first to see them. And look over here for a couple of videos that can make you a power platform expert.